I'm Randy Reed. We're here at Lux Live, and I'm joined by Simon Slupik, the CTO of Silver, also the chair of the Bluetooth Mesh Group. Simon, welcome. Thanks for having me. First of all, tell our audience a little bit about Bluetooth Mesh. Yeah, so probably many people have already heard about mesh networks. So mesh networks are networks of peer devices, uh, many of them, like we are speaking of thousands of devices connected to each other and capable of forwarding messages back and forth across the network. So that's the basic concept. Now, uh, mesh networks are mostly operating in the area of, of low power devices. That's how we refer to them. So you're speaking about battery operated devices or energy harvesting devices or devices that consume very low power <coughs> to keep them running. And, and that's supposed to high power networks like Wi-Fi, for example, networks that we use for our phones, for our uh, mobile computers, to transfer uh, high amounts of data. So low power networks are <coughs> architected to transport uh, low amounts of data at low power levels, but they are capable of accommodating thousands of those devices within them. Okay. So, so there's role with Bluetooth Mesh. What will that be? Yeah, so uh, we are one of the key contributors to that Bluetooth Mesh standard that was adopted uh, July this year. And we've been working on that for a couple of years. So, so it's our contribution as much as contributions from other members. You know, Bluetooth efforts is, is a member-driven effort. So, so it's members working together under the Bluetooth SIG umbrella to deliver a standard to the market. Um, of course, uh, that development that we've done within Bluetooth was preceded by technology development we did in-house. So it was our in-house research in how to use Bluetooth radio to enable creation of mesh networking. This is the area where Bluetooth was not present before. It's like Bluetooth <coughs> has been known for point-to-point -point connections, like right. your phone to your headset, sure. or points to multipoints, so things like beacons, for example, but it was never capable of creating networks. Now with Mesh, Bluetooth enters this new, what we refer to topology, where you have many too many relationships between devices, many sensors, many light sources, many controllers, many too many is the key theme here. Okay. Tell us uh, kind of some of the advantages, I guess, of wireless systems like Bluetooth Mesh over wired. Well, that seems to be pretty straightforward, and I always like to use, uh, refer to, to other um, uh, industries, other categories. So, so it, it, it's like you asking me today to convince you about why wireless telephones are better than okay. wired ones. Okay. Like it's, uh, it's so, kind so, of obvious. So it's done. The, 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 the debate is over. The debate is over. Wireless wins every time. Yeah, wireless wins because of flexibility, first of all. The, the okay. cost advantage is huge. The only things that people have been afraid so far is, is it reliable enough? And again, if you look at mobile phones, they were not that reliable 20 years ago. But right. today, do you have any drop calls? You don't. Very probably. few. Yeah, very few. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. So it just works. It's, it's a matter of like getting there. The technology yeah. is capable of getting there. It just needs to, to you know. Um, so let's speak a little bit about industry rollout. How will this be rolled out? Yeah, so Bluetooth Mesh has been designed to be backwards compatible with existing chips. So first of all, Bluetooth Mesh is a software stack and it's capable of running on existing hardware. So your phone and my phone and anybody else's right. phone can run Mesh application and can become a member of Bluetooth Mesh network. That's very important because we don't need to wait for this replacement cycle to happen. Uh, at the same time, all Bluetooth low energy chips that are out there already, they are capable of, of, of running mesh stack. So again, you can just source from your component suppliers the existing chips, you don't need to wait for new ones. So we believe the uptake will be pretty quick. And as of today, uh, we are already demonstrating a number of prototype products with our industry partners and you will see more and more announcements in the coming weeks or months and I believe uh, spring next year 
will be the moment when when when, when the leading uh, brands will be announcing the availability of, 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 of the lighting leading, products. The leading brands, the leading luminaire fitting manufacturers. I would even say the component manufacturers because this is how it works. It's not no longer a luminaire, it's the components inside a luminaire, like a sensor or a driver. They have to be Bluetooth mesh enabled. So okay. we work mostly with component suppliers okay. and yeah. luminaire manufacturers, they need really to take care if their suppliers can deliver them mesh compliant products. I understand. So really it's not up to the luminaire manufacturer to add it, he's just going to buy a driver that's compatible. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Now, can you tell us some real world benefits to an end user using Bluetooth mesh? Well, uh, depending how you define the end user, but the first and, 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 and for most benefit is, is on the cost side. So, um, Bluetooth mesh, of course, uh, it brings uh, lighting controls to lighting. That's the main role of, 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 of this, the first application. And today, if you envision lighting controls, what it takes, you usually envision a box, like a control box. And you need to wire or wirelessly configure your sensors to report to that box and that then configure the box, the rules, the scenarios that it handles like vacancy or occupancy or daylight harvesting. And then you need to configure that box to communicate to your lights. That's the conventional approach. And of course, these boxes have been fairly expensive. With Bluetooth mesh right. and the arrival- They are expensive and that's the issue. Exactly, and with Bluetooth Mesh, with the arrival of peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, that box is gone. It's no longer needed, that's the beauty. Because that box, essentially, if you think about it, it's a computer with software. So what we're doing, we're taking that software, we put a copy of that software in every light. So th that brings you a number of benefits. So first of all, it gives you a fully redundant system. So up till now, that box has been a single point of failure. It breaks. Right everything yeah. stops working. Now, right. if that box is multiplied right. across all the lights, if it breaks, just one light goes out. Everything else keeps going. That's, that's the beauty. Then, uh, of course, on the, on the commissioning side, it's becoming much simpler. We are using a so-called publish-subscribe information flow paradigm. So the lights, they simply subscribe to information from sensors, and that's it. Will each light have their own address? Yes, they have. Okay. Um, but they, you also create a concept of group addresses and they follow loosely a paradigm of communications like Twitter, for example. So you publish to a tag and you subscribe to a tag. So a sensor says, say your, a tag is your room. Right. So a sensor says to the room, I see people, I've detected motion. And I'm send, sending that to the room. And every light that subscribes to that room receives that information and acts upon it. So it's a very nicely coupled system, but so very easy to commission. Very easy to commission. And that's where that's, that's the second component where your cost effectiveness comes from. So first of all, we are getting rid of that box, and then the commissioning is that easy. So if we compare this to Dolly, mm -hmm. if we compare it to Z-Wave to Zigbee, it's going to be more cost effective. Of course. Um, the, the most cost-effective control system? I believe so, absolutely. And it's okay. also, you know, cost-effectiveness is one thing. The other thing is scalability and reliability. So, again, uh, there, is, there, there have been some, some myths about wireless that it's not reliable. As we talked about phones, wireless phones, everybody uses right. them today and they are reliable. So, so mesh networks can be reliable and Bluetooth mesh is definitely designed with reliability in mind. So it performs like wired systems, or even better. Um, it scales. We are talking about thousands of lights, hundreds of sensors. Uh, you mentioned technologies like Z-Wave. They max out at around 200 devices. Bluetooth Mesh goes much higher than that. So we are addressing commercial spaces. So as chairman of the Bluetooth Mesh Working Group, what keeps you awake at night? Um, really, the excitement about okay. uh, <laughs> what we are working on. I mean, okay. you know, we are transforming this industry and, and I know Bluetooth has not been the brand that used to be associated with lighting, but I believe now it will be or okay. it's becoming that, that, that 
connotation is, is happening. So, so uh, we are confident that we are bringing a real transformation and real disruption to that market. And yeah, I'm really looking to attract more and more contributors. So that's what really keeps me awake. How do I get that message out to partners, especially in the lighting industry, who could come over and say, hey, we need more of this, more of that, and they are right. willing to contribute. Because it's the Bluetooth community that creates right. these systems, these specifications. But this uh, working group, or this SIG, is really started here in the UK. And that's where a lot of the focus is. It's worldwide standards, but it it's kind of invented here in the UK. Is yeah, that fair? Yeah, yeah. Um, but worldwide. The, the leading, yeah. The, the, the UK has been very strong in, in wireless and, 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 and in, in embedded. You know, they're like very well known uh, uh, places where, where, where universities work together with, 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 with companies who are leaders in that area. Like Cambridge okay. is one that comes first right. to my mind. Uh, this is where those standards are really born and then they filter through the, 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 the standard bodies. But, but really the technology is coming from here, I fully agree. Okay. Have you done anything with standards in the US? Um, it's, uh, you know, it's global. This is how we look at it. It's global. It's, and it is again one of the advantages of Bluetooth that it's a fully global standard. It's the same right. set of frequencies, Japan, Asia, South America, Europe. Uh, right. It's the same Bluetooth. So okay. you, it's a beauty for manufacturers as well because you can have just one SKU, uh, globally certified, and you can ship it wherever you like. Okay. This is all very exciting today, what I'm learning. Tell me about the future. Where do you see this in five years? Oh yeah, that's a great question, and and, and, and that's really what keeps uh, fueling our excitement. Because if we look at the ceiling with ceilings with lights, we can really see a ceiling populated with powerful connected computers. This is what the light sources are becoming right. now, and and I'm seeing a lot of applications that are delivered over uh, traditionally what used to be a lighting network. So for example, indoor location, asset tracking, these are the, you know, imagine airports or hospitals or uh, any public places where you need to locate equipment or you need to help people find themselves. So this, this all is, 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 like people are talking about that. This is not right. being rolled out because we need the infrastructure indoors and we believe connected lighting mesh networks will deliver that, that infrastructure. So uh, we are working again on standardizing these uh, within Bluetooth and uh, again to, to really answer the future I would have to invite everybody to join the Bluetooth group because then I can okay. talk openly about what's on the table. Well Simon this is fascinating and I thank you for your time. Thank you very All much. Right.